Hi guys, I'm Nick Gregoriadis from the Jiu Jitsu Brotherhood and I'm here with Tim Peterson. We're at his gym, Robot Fight Fitness in Los Angeles. And the reason I wanted to make this video today is because I feel Tim has something really special to share with you guys for your Jiu Jitsu. I've been traveling the world for almost two years and teaching and training Jiu Jitsu for more than a decade. And I've had the chance to work with some very high level teachers who understand technical Jiu Jitsu on a very high level. But it's very rare that I come across someone who has such an insight into the concepts and principles which underpin the art of Jiu Jitsu. And uh, Tim, I really believe, is something special and I'm very excited to, to share with you some of his knowledge today. So let's check out what he's got to show. Hi, I'm Tim Peterson with Robot Fight and Fitness, here with Nick Gregorardis today. Uh, I met Nick, he just walked in one day, I had to pretend like I didn't know who he was, but I knew who he was. Uh, and so we've been training together and we wanted to show some techniques, some principle-based approach to jiu-jitsu. Uh, what we're going to try and do is take a problem that I don't really know what it is, where it starts or anything like that, and just work our way through it based on a few principles that uh, Nick and I have been exploring. Uh, we're going to look at two main principles today. Uh, they're, they're related to each other, extension and rotation. Uh, another way to think of them is push and pull but we'll kind of see why extension and rotation might be more useful ways to frame them. Um, they really are the only two types of problems in jiu-jitsu. We can categorize everything you run into as problem of extension or problem of rotation. So what we're gonna do is look at it first from the spider guard and then second from the closed guard to kind of show how it uh, applies to many different positions. And then we'll just look at simple things like grip breaking and freeing ourselves from these positions in order to advance with a guard pass or other attack. Okay, so the first situation is the spider guard. And Nick here is creating a problem of extension and rotation for me. He's rotating the hands, twisting out all the slack. And then he's extending with the leg press on one side. If he decides to switch to the other side, he simply extends and pulls out the slack on the other side. You can tell that he's controlling the slack because if he twists his hands and really extends here, now if I try to shake, there's not a whole lot of give. If you were to just unrotate a little bit and give a little bit on that side, now when I shake, the slack is up for grabs. Either one of us can control it. The main thing I want to do is gain control of the slack and keep it using torque, meaning twisting or rotational force. So first thing we always do is we attach our hands to create stability. And from here, I'm going to twist as much as I can, bringing my elbows, hands, and shoulders towards my spine, like this. From here, now if, if, I, if uh, Nick starts to try and shake, I'm controlling the slack, okay? One more time, he's extending. I can't really get freedom of movement, but if I take over the slack, now I'm in control, and I'm gonna start to back up, rotate my hands and knuckles into his shins, place his feet on the ground, back up, and after I've taken out all the slack twisting here, I'm gonna hip extend into my grip. From here, if Nick were to try and recover guard, it's gonna be very hard for him to do, and I can pass the first time I sense that he's moving. It's created extension, twist, control the slack, feet on the ground, legs out of range of his, hip extend into my knuckles, move to the side, and begin passing. So let's dig in a little deeper on extension and rotation from the spider guard, and then maybe we can look at how it exists in other positions in Jiu Jitsu. Okay? So the first thing, again, Nick has me in the spider guard. And he's using this rotation to essentially attach me to a leg press. He's pulling me onto his leg press, which is his extension. His hands are providing rotation. So I want to free myself from this. The first thing I have to do is create stability. So I'm going to grab on, twist out all the slack. And from here, now that I'm in control of the slack, I have a few options for how to free myself. We always solve problems of extension by rotating. So if Nick extends again from here, what I don't want to do is try and push against this. I want to twist out the slack, and now I'm going to rotate to stop him from extending again. I'll flex my fingers to my wrist, circle my hand through, and cup his leg. From here, I'm no longer attached to a leg press on this side. I can rotate inside on this side as well, or I can rotate back over the top, putting my knuckles on his shin. From here, twist out the slack at the elbow, back up, place the leg on the floor, and continue with the guard pass. One thing to keep in mind with extension and rotation is you can tell if you're getting ahead on the guard pass by what part of the body your partner's extending you with. So right here, he's extending me with the legs. No good for me. 
as I twist out the slack and free myself, if I move into a superior position for passing and Nick starts to extend me with his arms, I know I'm getting ahead. People will never extend you with the arms if they can extend with the knee or the ankle line. So I can make sure, okay, I'm making progress, and from here I would advance again. All right, so we're coming back and looking at extension and rotation. First thing I uh, wanna do is actually back up a second. Um, I remember when I started jujitsu, and I would roll with blue belts, purple belts, brown, black belts. There was something different about blue and black belts. I didn't know what it was, and I'm still kind of figuring that out, but I knew there was something. There was something more than he does an omoplata or this guy doesn't. And I realized that when we start jujitsu and we're picking up our, our initial movements, we hear things like control the hips or create space or these ideas and these movements that at first we think, oh, I don't get this because I'm new. But the reality of it is we don't get it at first because it doesn't make any sense because those are not terms and vocabulary that we can grasp with something we already know. When someone says control the hips, are they saying stop them from moving their hips? Are they saying follow their hips? Are they saying dictate what they do? It's not clear. But if we frame things in a vocabulary instead of grammar that makes a little more sense and is universal, then we can all start talking about the same problems and start talking about the same solutions. Extension and rotation are the easiest ways to understand these ideas of space and control. Space is just the existence of slack. The existence of when you have a towel and it's, and it's wet and you want to wring it out, you have to twist the towel up, take all the slack out, and water comes right out. When we are using our techniques in jiu-jitsu, we use rotation to attack and extension to defend. So what we'll see right now is I use rotation to try and control the distance between our spines. And if I'm not doing that, my partner is, and he's winning or attacking. Okay, so let's look real quick. If Nick has me in a spider guard, the most important thing for him to do is to continue controlling the distance between our spines. That's why this leg press is so central. As I start to take the slack out and use torque to control this position, I'm gonna grab, twist in, and I can circle and start to remove this barrier. Now I go to the side, and even if Nick wants to stop me, it will be much harder to stop me from bringing my spine towards his than for me to do the opposite. So I could drop my shoulder down. I could bring my knee to him. I can bring my other knee. What I do at that point isn't as consequential as the fact that now once I land, Nick can't say, oh, just get up and walk away, but I could. And so we see our first instance of me using torque to control the slack and determine how far apart our spines are. All right, so again, we've been talking about extension, rotation, using those ideas to understand who's attacking, who's defending, and we've looked at it exclusively from the spider guard. But we can expand a little bit by understanding the concept of a fixed point, okay? So the easiest way to understand that is to just think about when you grab onto a doorknob to turn it and open a door, or you use a wrench to loosen a nut and bolt, what happens is the point starts fixed, you twist, rotate, and then you can either remove the bolt or open the door, whatever you need to do. But understanding where the fixed point is is central to being able to apply torque and control the slack. So if we look at this uh, same situation to start, where Nick has me in the spider guard, he's controlling the torque and his main fixed point is gonna be this extended leg on my elbow and the rotation he gets from the pull in his hand, okay? I grab on and I don't really have the ability to control the slack yet, but as I twist and apply torque, I place his feet on the ground and now I've created a fixed point from my knuckles into his leg and then his feet into the floor. From here, I'm gonna staple that into place by twisting my elbows tight, pulling my hands towards my shoulders and extending through the hip. As I move to the side, I'll create a new fixed point from my shoulder onto his knee. I'm gonna slide down to his hip, pull out the slack again as I walk back to parallel with our spines and I'm gonna make sure I pass his ankle line with my whole body. From here, I grab up at the shoulder line, twist out all the slack, and now my shoulder is stapled into place. The thing about a fixed point is it allows you to rotate around it and it increases in its effectiveness. This is a great place to see that. With my elbow, this is not a very good fixed point because as I move away from this, it gets weaker. Right, we know that concept, elbows open, no good. 
My shoulder's a fixed point though. As I keep it on his hip and rotate around the corner, it becomes more powerful to the point where I can rotate and take his back or put him in side control. Now Nick will know that this pressure is gonna get his guard passed, so he'll start to create extension against this rotation. I don't wanna try and use that fixed point anymore, so I'm gonna bring a new one into play. That's where we see knee on belly, or the other knee. It's not important which knee I use, it's just important that it's fixed in place, and I twist out the slack to keep it there. From here I can drop down, create a fixed point again with my shoulder, go to another attack or new position. But by moving a fixed point from the ankle line, to the knee line, to the hip line, and then the shoulder line, we advance past the guard and into a submission, whether that's a choke or an arm lock. So we've looked at extension and rotation as it applies to the spider guard. We started advancing to more dominant positions, but we can also back up and look at extension and rotation from a perspective that's already more familiar, and that would be the bridge and the hip escape. So a quick uh, review, if Nick is passing my guard, as he makes his way to the side and creates a fixed point with the knee or the shoulder and drops down to a cross face, he's creating more and more torque with a fixed point against my spine. And that's where the submissions come from. In order to defeat this, I first have to use extension. Now, both of us uh, are going to prioritize our spinal alignment. That's not really something we can choose, but if I start affecting his neck here, he will give ever so slightly. And once I start creating a little bit of slack, a little bit of separation between us, I can try to move him over my hip. If I'm successful, then I can extend with my hip and begin rotating on my shoulder in order to allow my hip to back up. Once my hip is back, I can realign my ankle and knee line and I can create extension against him to prevent him from passing again. Okay, so one more time he comes around and he's trying to create a fixed point on me. It might be with the shoulder and as I affect that shoulder, he might pop up to knee on belly. The principle's the same though. Oh, I wanna put his knee over my hip as much as possible. From here I can extend, and now I'm going to rotate on my shoulder to move my hip back, and this allows me to replace my ankle and knee line. I grab my grips and pull out the slack again, and now I'm control, in control. I can use my extension to keep him at bay, and now I can start to uh, attack him with sweeps or submissions. But you already know the hip escape and the bridge. So now maybe by knowing the purpose and function of them, you can apply them in attacking positions and freer positions and things like that. Thanks, Tim. That was, that was amazing. I learned a lot. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Nick. I really appreciate that.